Hey there, the Ben Inspiration app here. I'm going to take you through a tutorial on how to onboard on Atlas Network as a provider and also how to add your machine to Atlas. Now, by doing so, as part of the ongoing airdrop campaign or incentivized testnet campaign, you would receive some NPs which would be convertible to the future node token. Now, to do so, just come to the incentivized testnet dashboard, and the first thing that you're going to have to do is to connect your wallet to the dashboard. Now to do so, just come up here and click on connect wallet and connect to the wallet that you want to use for this incentivized testnet. Now, after you connect for the first time, you can add a referral code. So here you can use my referral code, the pin, and then click on apply. And then after that, you will be brought onto the dashboard. Now there are a few campaigns that you can do even beyond adding a compute. So there are several quests that you can see here on the globe. You can click through each quest to see what the quest is all about. And what we're going to do, like I said, is we're going to be adding a compute onto Atlas. Now to be able to add a compute on Atlas, you need to be a compute provider. And this is also a quest that you can do to get 1000 NPs. Now to do so, come to the right section here, or you can also scroll through and look for register as compute provider. So to register as a compute provider, the first thing that you're going to do is to come to the Atlas provider dashboard. Now on the dashboard, just click on connect wallets and then connect to the wallet that you want to use as a provider. Now after connecting the wallets, you first need to stake some no tokens to be able to be a provider. But like I said, as part of the incentivized testnet, currently you can do this for free. There is no staking of node required. So what you have to do is just click on stake and become a provider. But however, everything with respect to the incentivized testnet takes place on Arbitrum Sepolia. So you're going to need a little bit of ETH on Arbitrum Sepolia to be able to cover for the gas fees. But there are a lot of faucets out there that you can use to get some free gas fees. So just for instance, this is an example that I use with Alchemy. You just have to put in your wallet address here. And then you need to get a minimum of 0.001 ETH on your wallet. They're going to send you some free ETH to cover for the gas fees. And you'll be technically good to go. So after getting your gas ETH tokens from the faucet, you can basically proceed with the staking process. Now, the process is very simple. All you have to do is just click on stake and become a provider. Then you're going to sign the transaction on your wallet. You're going to confirm this and then you go to go. So you see that it says token staked successfully. Currently, it didn't find any machine because I use a testing wallet, but I'm going to proceed with an account that already has some machines already on that account. So as you can see here, I've already onboarded three computes. These two I did just this morning. That's why the workload looks zero. On the right side, you see one that I onboarded yesterday. And surprisingly, this is really good, guys. I already have eight nodes that are running on this compute. So when I click on this, you see that I can currently see I have a 16 CPU core, 62 gigabyte of RAM. I think about 500 disk space that I had. And I currently have eight nodes that are running on it. And the uptime is 100%, so which means that my node is up and running. Now, the important thing is to take note of what the requirements are to be able to add a machine to Atlas. So the minimum requirement is two CPU cores, four gigabyte of RAM, 80 gigabyte of NVMe. So please take note of this fact that SSDs are not going to be allowed. You have to get an NVMe storage. And for the bandwidth, more than one gigabyte should be more than sufficient. And of course, you need a high uptime because nodes are going to be run on your compute or on your machine. Now, in terms of the computer, the computes are classified into what is called compute units. So one compute unit is one CPU core, two gigabyte of RAM and 30 gigabyte of storage. So whatever that you add to Atlas is going to be calculated against one compute unit. So for instance, if your compute has four CPU cores, eight gigabyte of RAM and 120 gigabyte of storage, this is going to be classified as three compute units. But with respect to what you can onboard, this is the minimum requirement that you need to take note of. Now, another important aspect is that in order to add a machine to Atlas, you need to be a compute provider. Now, to be a provider, you have to stake 200 node tokens for provider onboarding. And for every machine that you add, you're gonna have to stake 200 node tokens per compute unit. So if your machine that you are onboarding, for instance, is for compute units, then you're going to have to pay four times what the node token is going to be. The good thing to onboard a compute now is that as part of the incentivized testnet, the staking is free. And that is why you can onboard your computer or your compute without having to pay the node tokens. But after the incentivized testnet, this would most likely change so that you're going to have to stake some tokens to be able to be a compute provider. And also very important to mention that the computer that you're going to dedicate to Atlas has to be used solely for Atlas. So please do not use your VPS for any other thing because this is going to lead to your wallets being flagged or banned across the 
Atlas platforms. And additionally, this could also lead to you losing your funds because you are basically not helping the ad network. Now, there are several VPS providers that are out there. There is Contabo, there is DigitalOcean, there is Hetzner, a whole pool of providers that are out there. One of my personal favorites is Contabo because the prices that they offer are pretty low compared to other providers out there. And also, especially with respect to the specifications or the configuration or the specs of the computes or the VPS that they provide to you. So here you can see that they have different cloud VPS options. They have cloud VPS one, they have cloud VPS two, all the way to cloud VPS six. Now, if you take the cloud VPS one option, you're going to get four CPU cores, four gigabyte of RAM and hundred NVMe. Remember one compute unit was one CPU core, two gigabyte of RAM and 30 gigabyte of NVMe. So technically, this means that you're going to get a two compute unit. If you want to go more, you can also go more. So in my case, for instance, I went with a cloud VPS five, but you do not need to go with this option. You can also onboard with cloud VPS one and pay $5 a month. It basically depends on how much you want to invest as a compute provider. Now choose whatever option that you want to go with. For instance, I'm going to make an example with a cloud VPS one option. And then here you basically see the specifications that you're going to get for your VPS. And then here, just choose the duration that you want to run with. Now for the region, you can either choose European Union or United States. So currently both of them are going to be free, but as you can see here, the best latency is in European Union, but also try to diversify if you are going to be running several computers on Atlas, because this is the main purpose of decentralization. Now, when you scroll down here for the story type, this is very, very important. The default is chosen as 400 gigabyte of SSD, which is free, but go with the NVMe because the Atlas doesn't work with SSD. It currently works exclusively with the NVMe storage. So you're going to get a little bit of less disk storage if you go with NVMe, but 100 gigabyte is already sufficient for two compute units or even three compute. But the RAM that we chose at the beginning it's just four gigabyte and that's why we can get three compute units where we get two compute units. Now for the image, you can go with Ubuntu 22.04. This is what I chose and tested and this works flawlessly. I have not had any problems so far. And for the password, this is going to be the password that you're going to use when you are connecting to your VPS server. So please make sure that it's a password that you're going to remember because if you lose this password, you lose the credentials to connect to your VPS server. There are ways that you can log on to your Contabo account and change the VPS and change the password, but why go through that header if you can take note of the password? Now, when you scroll down beyond this point, you don't need to change anything. You can just leave everything as a default and then go to next, make the payments, and I'm gonna show you what the next steps are gonna be. So after you place the order for your VPS, within a few minutes or sometimes hours, you're gonna receive an email like this from Contabo. Mine is in German, but the layout is gonna look exactly the same, irrespective of which location that you are. Now, from the email that you're gonna receive from Contabo, the only thing that we're gonna need is the IP address because this is IP address that we're going to use to connect to the VPS server. And then here for server type, you're going to see the type of server that you purchased. There's a template with VPS2, but in your case, if you're using VPS1, you're going to see but technically VPS1 here. Now the username is going to be root as always. This is always going to be root. The password here, they're not going to show you in the email. The password is going to be the password that you used when you were purchasing the VPS. So now you have purchased a VPS server. You have the credentials to log on into the VPS server. What we're going to need now is an application that is going to connect us to the VPS server. Now there are several applications out there that you can use. If you are using Windows operating system, it's always easy to use an application here that is called Putty. So Putty is a free application that you can download and use. I'm going to put a link to the downloads in the description section, which is going to bring you to this page here. Now, if you're using Windows, just click on Windows. Depending on the processor type that you use, just download the right application that is going to work with your PC. After you download the application, it's a very, very easy application to install. Just install the application and I'm going to show you in the next stage how we're going to connect to the VPS server using Putty. If you do not want to use Putty or maybe you're using a Mac operating system, both Windows and Mac have an inbuilt application that you can also use to connect to the VPS server. And I'm going to demonstrate to you also how you can do this. So firstly, I'm going to show you how you can connect to the VPS server using Putty. So this is how the Putty application looks. It's a very simple application to use. All you have to do is to come to the section that is called host name and type in root. So root is the username, if you remember, of our VPS credentials. And then use the symbol at 
and then type in the IP address of your VPS server. So the IP address is the IP address that you received when you purchased your VPS from Contabo. So I've pasted this IP address and after that, you can leave the port at port 22 and just click on open. So as you can see here, it's using the username root and what it's asking me now is to type in the password. Now in Putty, when you're pasting in a password or whenever you are typing the password, you do not see what you are typing. So if you have a very complex password, my tip is always to type the password in the very safe location, copy the password and paste it into the console and just press enter. So I'm going to paste in my password and I'm just going to press enter. And as you can see, I'm connected to the Contabo VPS server. Now, what I'm going to show you now is another way that you can connect to the VPS server using an inbuilt application for Windows, which is called a Windows Powered Shell. If you're using a Mac operating system, there's also an inbuilt application in Mac OS that is called Terminal. How are you going to connect to the VPS server using Windows Powered Shell and Terminal is the same with respect to the commands that we're going to use. Now, to connect to the VPS server using Windows Powered Shell, just search the application called windows powershell and just open the application here so on the left is a putty application i'm just going to leave this running as well and on the right i'm going to show you how you can connect using windows PowerShell. now to connect to the vps using windows powershell just use the command ssh space root so root is the username of your vps server at and then type in the ip address of your vps server so i have typed in the ip address and after that just press enter and then what we're going to do now is type in the password of our vps server here as well you're not going to see the password so if it's a very complex password you can type it somewhere copy come into the console and right click so whenever you right click into the console whether you're using putty or windows powershell it pastes whatever that you have in the clipboard and just press enter and then as you can see here it looks exactly the same whether i'm using putty or whether I'm using Windows PowerShell. So the choice is yours. You can choose whatever application that you want to use to connect to the VPS server. Now, beyond this point, I'm going to proceed using an application that is called Temios. This is basically my favorite application because it allows me to save all the credentials of my VPS server because I have about 20 VPS servers running and it's very easy for me to manage the VPS server using the Temios application. So I'm going to proceed with Temios, but whatever I'm going to do is in Temios is exactly the same as what you can also do using either Putty or using Windows PowerShell. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect to the VPS server using the credentials that I got from Contabo. And now I'm connected to the VPS server. Please don't do anything with the VPS server yet because we're going to have to activate the Atlas network on the VPS server. Now to do so, the first thing that you're going to have to do is to come to the provider dashboard. I'm also going to provide a link to this in the description section. And when you want to provide a dashboard, just click on add machine and then the number of machines that you want to add. Now for this example, I'm going to be adding one machine. You can also, if you have multiple machines, you can also choose this. Like I said, for this example, I'm going to go with one machine and just click on continue. Now there are five steps that we're going to have to go through to completely onboard this machine. Now the first thing is the sign transaction. Everything is going to be done automatically for you. All you have to do is to just click through and sign the transactions on your wallet. Now to begin with, I'm going to go with sign transaction and then I'm going to sign the transaction here. And I'm going to go with next step, which is to sign the setup transaction again. And I'm going to sign the transaction. And then very, very important, you see that a command has been generated for us. And for me, this is the beauty of Atlas, that you do not need to type 20 commands. It's just one command that you're going to put into your VPS and then you're good to go. So I'm going to copy this command here and I'm going to come back to my VPS and I'm just going to enter this command and I'm going to press enter. And then you can see that the Atlas node software is already up and running. So currently you can see that everything went on very well. I see that enabling Atlas provider service units and then starting Atlas provider service. So technically that's all that you need to do. Literally, I'm serious. That's all that you need to do on the VPS end. Again, please do not do anything with this VPS. Just leave it to run only Atlas and don't try to install any other application on it because this is going to lead to your accounts being flagged. Now I'm going to go back to the Atlas provider dashboard and then I'm going to click on finish. And then when you come here and you go to all, you would see, so I have a lot of compute stuff. Don't worry the most important one that we just set up is the one that you see here with the zen mist koj0 and you see that i have to stake some tokens in order to activate it so to activate just come here and click on stake and then sign the transaction on your wallet and then you see that i got notification that staked successfully and then I'm just going to wait a few minutes. This is going to change and then my computer will basically be up and running. So you see that it's changed from waiting to stay to configuring. It's going to wait a bit longer. And now you can see that the status has changed to active. So when I come to my active section, this is the new node that we, this is the new computer we just set up. You see that it's active. Currently there are no 
workloads running on that with time you would see that your compute would start picking up workload provided that you have a very good uptime for instance like i said you can see with the one that i just i set up yesterday you can see that there are already eight workloads that are running on it so soon you would see that your compute will also start picking up workload and you will start getting paid for it after you have successfully onboarded your machines you are now eligible to claim the respective end piece now to do so just come onto the same overview that we worked with at the beginning and look for the quest add a machine which is this one here by the way there is also a filter here that you can use where you can basically choose live quest and then for category you can choose deployment and another deployment you would see the quest that we just did which is the add a machine so when you click on this and you click on check status it's going to basically check the status that you have successfully added your machine or onboarded the machine and you would receive the respective end piece so folks that's it about how to onboard a machine onto atlas if you do have any questions feel free to reach out and i'm very very happy to help you out thanks for watching this video and see you in the next one bye